This is Paul, February the 7th, 2018, and we're talking about aborting America and Kermit Gosnell. Now the baby girl to the right actually uh, is a victim of murder by not only Kermit Gosnell but complicit America. The image was taken from the report of the grand jury in the Court of Common Pleas, 1st Judicial District of Pennsylvania, Criminal Trial Division, Grand Jury 23 by R. Seth Williams, uh, District Attorney, uh, 2011. Babies by the thousands are murdered and these words in yellow are mine, babies by the thousands are murdered all across our land and America has been failing to stop the carnage. That's a picture of the report, the front cover of that report that I referred to. Now to the lower right is an infant boy who was murdered in Kermit Gosnell's Philadelphia abortion clinic and the woman it was a mother murdered by the same clinic and her picture is to the left. If you think these are fake images, you can get your own copy of the report online. That's what I did. I got it online. Many of these images are there and more. Now, why did I say in the first slide, complicit America? In the excellent book, you see it there, Gosnell, The Untold Story of America's Most Prolific Serial Killer, and the authors are listed, we learn, and their pictures, by the way, are in the middle down there at the bottom, we learn that it was Republican Governor Tom Ridge who instituted the hands-off policy for regulating abortion clinics in Pennsylvania. That's very sad. Now, Gosnell is currently serving life sentences in a Pennsylvania prison for multiple murders, but for a long time he was enabled by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to continue his murderous work. It was, in other words, looking the other way. Many administrators were complicit but when American voters vote pro-death, that is, anti-pro-life, they themselves become complicit in this evil. Some may ask, why didn't the German people stop Hitler? For the same reason American people don't stop Margaret Sanger and her Planned Parenthood's atrocities. Sanger was a racist bigot and evolutionary activist to the core. She wrote, quote, the most danger merciful thing that the large family does to one of his infant members is to kill it. You can see her words to the right there about uh, black soldiers, Jews, menace to the race, and so on. Finally, after Gosnell was exposed, uh, another Republican governor, Tom Corbett, called the failures of the Department of Health and the Department of State despicable and sacked six managers and started updating the state regulations that govern abortion clinics. There's the clinic to the right there in Philadelphia, 3801 Lancaster Avenue, and there's Dr. Gosnell in the middle and Tom Corbett on the left. Now I want to read the words from the trial of that woman you see on the right there, Lydia Williams. She had an eighth grade education and got caught up in Gosnell's House of Horrors. At the trial regarding Baby D she testified, now listen to these words in yellow. I'm quoting from the, from the report. The baby precipitated into the toilet. I took it out 
of the toilet and put it in a bowl, and I used surgical scissors to cut the back of the baby's neck, just like Dr. Gosnell showed me to do. She gave clarification. Before I cut the neck, I saw the baby's arms moving. This was when I took it from the toilet and put it in the bowl, and then I went to put it in a milk jug to take it upstairs. Before I put it in the milk jug, I saw the arms moving, and that's when I cut the back of the neck. Imagine, not even a high school graduate doing this kind of work. Gosnell taught her to murder. Over a month ago, I sent a letter to Kermit Gosnell at the prison. I referred to the book that I had been reading and supplied him with a stomp, stamped envelope to return responses to my questions. One of them was, how would you describe yourself? Baptist? Atheist? Buddhist? I also asked him if he were a follower of Darwin. There's been no response yet. In the book which I finished reading on March 3rd, there is a poem by Gosnell which uses Genesis 2-7 to justify, supposedly justify, abortion. Here's what the verse says. Yahweh God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Gosnell wrote, quote, Application. No life until breath. Does this doctor actually believe that a child in the womb for nine months is not living because it's not breathing? What kind of a doctor is he? Second, just seven chapters later in the same book of Genesis, it says, Whoever sheds men's blood... His blood will be shed by man, for God made man in his own image. Gosnell had all kinds of human blood all over his hands. He actually should be put to death for being the worst serial killer ever in America. At least that's what some claim. And it's got a lot of sense to it. He got away with this for over 30 years years. Americans are still complicit in evil. Keeping this man even alive at taxpayers' expense instead of sending a message that murderers in line with Genesis 9-6 should be put to death by the state is disobeying God. One advantage of obeying God would be that the murderer would not be able to murder again. Some murderers have got out of prison and done more murders. Another is that we taxpayers don't have to pay for this food, for his food and lodging for the rest of his life. A case could be made that his being cared for by taxpayers is actually a reward. He no longer has to work for food, heat, or bed. Gosnell also sought to justify his actions by referring to Jesus' words in John 15, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. What was Gosnell's comment for this verse? Application. I'm quoting. A woman purged brings forth more fruit. The previous verse, however, says, I, Jesus, am the true vine, and my Father is the farm the farmer. First, Jesus was speaking of the Father pruning not Kermit Gosnell. In no way should Gosnell be confused with God the Father. Second, pruning should be done after the fruit has been harvested. Women coming to Kermit were fruit-bearing. Harvest the fruit. Don't kill it. Third, the woman's statistic statistically were significantly damaged, less able to bear fruit in the future. In fact, in the case of one, she actually died. Should we conclude that Gosnell was a Christian because he quoted the Bible? 
The devil also quoted the Bible, see Matthew 4, 6, but he was no less the devil. People who twist God's word to justify the murder of hundreds, if not thousands, are more in league with the devil than Christ. Jesus said the devil was a murderer from the beginning. Gosnell was in league with murder. Here is an overview of the grand jury's finding I'm quoting. This case is about a doctor who killed the babies and endangered women. What we mean is that he regularly and illegally delivered live, viable babies in the third trimester of pregnancy and then murdered these newborns by severing their spinal cords with scissors. Now, I actually give you a picture of that later on, but I'm going to warn you before it, uh, I show it to you. It's, it's the last slide. Viewers uh, will be warned, the, and I'm continuing now from the findings of the grand jury. The medical practice by which he carried out this business was a filthy, and I add hideous, fraud in which he overdosed his patients with dangerous drugs, spread venereal disease among them with infected instruments, perforating, perforated their wombs and bowels, and on at least two occasions caused their deaths. Over the years, many people came to know that something was going on here, but no one put a stop to it. One of the bizarre aspects of this, as reported and even illustrated by the grand jury in their report, is that Gosnell kept baby feet, apparently, as trophies. An image of this, too, will be provided near the end. Again, the viewer will be forewarned. Additionally, concerning the woman, woman he murdered, Gosnell said, to investigators who came at the cl clinic and so on, he said, oh, by the way, that's Mrs. Mongar's fetus. That's a picture of her down below with her husband. He was referring to the fetus she had delivered before her death. The girl baby was still in one of Gosnell's freezers, and you can see a picture there to the right. The mother had died months earlier. Imagine a woman dies and her fetus that she was aborted is, is frozen in a freezer. On page 189, the authors of the book Gosnell refer to the testimony of Dr. Charles Benjamin during the trial. He was asked how many abortions he had performed over the course of his career. He said, and this is at the trial, at least 40,000. The jury was shocked. And so should be every American OBGYN doctors all over this country are doing similar. The number associated with Hitler is 6 million. The number associated with American abortions since 1973 is about 10 times that number. Is America 10 times worse then Hitler's Germany? On page 210, Jack McMahon, he was Gosnell's lawyer, quizzed another doctor, Dr. Karen T. Feisluin, uh at Abington Memorial Hospital, where, where my wife actually served as a nurse for a while. There's, there's a picture of my wife in the middle while she was a nurse there. At, and she also taught in the School of Nursing there. And that's a picture on the right of, of uh, Abington Hospital, Ab Ab Abington Memorial Hospital. So he, w he asked her, the Gosnell's lawyer asked her about a breach, abortion. She said, quote, a suction catheter is inserted at the base of the skull to remove the contents of the head and the brain is suctioned out so that the skull collapses and it comes out easily. America, 
This was an American doctor testifying, presumably under oath. Are you excited about sucking babies' brains out? Should Democrats and or Republicans ever vote pro-death again? That's a picture of the lawyer, Jack McMahon. Further down on the same page in the book, she affirmed McMahon's summary. He, he tried to encapsulate what she was saying. This is quoting McMahon, the lawyer. They would jam scissors into the baby's skull. The scissors are then opened to enlarge the hole, and scissors are removed, and the suction cup is inserted. The brains are sucked out, causing the skull to collapse, and the baby is then removed. Now, you would, ima you would wonder why he would do that. Well, he's trying to show that what Dr. Gosnell was doing was not all that different from the accepted procedure known as partial birth abortion. The difference is that these doctors were sucking out the brains before the full birth of the child, and uh, Gosnell was doing it after the birth. Americans, this evil has been happening all over our land for 45 years since 1973. I hate it. Don't you? Always vote pro-life for the unborn, whether it's Republican or Democrat. But it's okay to vote pro-death for murderers, because God says so in Genesis 9-6. On page 265 of the book, Carly Farina a uh, former presidential candidate said, and I'm quoting her, this was aired, and this is from a CN transcript, watch a fully formed fetus on the table, its heart beating, its legs kicking, while someone says we have to keep it alive to harvest its brain. This is about the character of our nation, and if we will not stand up and force President Obama to veto this bill, shame on us. We're complicit. It's, it's very sad. Planned Parenthood has been harvesting organs from aborted babies and selling them. This is outrageous. I agree with her. No president in our country should ever countenance such ugliness and evil. Have you had an abortion? Have you encouraged someone else to have an abortion? Are you burdened by a secret? There's hope. Yes, killing a baby is murder. But that is why Jesus went to the cross. You can have that sin forgiven, but you must admit you sin and trust in him to cleanse you from it by his precious blood shed on a cross. 2,000 years ago. He cleanses me daily, and I've got a picture of me when I was young on the right there. He can cleanse you. Turn from your sin and faith to Him. Ask Him. He is God the Son. He can hear your prayer. Read His invitation to you in Matthew 11 where He says, Come unto me, all you that labor in a heavy land, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and so on. You can read it there. And then 1 John 1, 7, where it says, The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. If you repent, Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. But you, if you repent and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, please forgive me of my, son, uh, my sin and, wa and wash me and cover me in your righteousness because my rags of filth are rotten. Come to know the joy of forgiveness. Look for ways to help both mothers and their babies. Jesus said, The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have life and may have it abundantly. Feel free to call me. I give you my phone number there. Or write me. I give you my email address. If you are a woman, perhaps I can refer, refer you to my beloved wife who has much wisdom in that area. She served as director of Alpha Pregnancy Services uh, in Philadelphia for 23 years, has much experience. She's a registered nurse. And that's a picture of her 
around the time that we got married, and there's one on the left some many years later. Now here comes the two images that I promised earlier at the count of three. You don't have to watch it if you don't want. It's the last slide coming. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's this snipped spine on the left, upper left there. It's really essentially a decapitation because it separates the head from the spine. Can you imagine such grossness? And then in the lower picture you can see a baby's foot there on the right and in the middle and presumably there's one on the left. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would use this video to touch people with their ugliness of sin and may they repent and turn away from it and say, Jesus, give me life. You are the only Savior. May I entrust my whole being into your saving care from this moment on and forever.